Hello, beautiful internet family. My name is Dan Davis, and I'm the creative director here at danstube.tv, as well as the Fearless Drone Academy, which is the ultimate online drone course for beginners. And in today's episode, I'm testing how well the DJI Mini 3 Pro can avoid obstacles. Now we're using the tri-directional obstacle sensing here and I'm testing out A-Pass 4.0. So I've got the drone set up in that bypass mode. So the bypass mode is basically when A-Pass 4.0 is enabled and A-Pass actually stands for Advanced Pilot Assistance Systems. So a bit of a mouthful, but basically it detects objects in the aircraft's flight path in real time. So this actually allows the drone to avoid obstacles even in complicated environments. And that's what I put it in in this test here I really put it in a complicated environment there are a bunch of trees a bunch of like low-hanging branches and shrubbery and lots of fun stuff going on here so this was a true test to see how well the mini 3 could avoid obstacles so as you would know the DJI mini 3 Pro has that tri-directional obstacle sensing that means it's got front facing sensors rear sensors and downward facing sensors that means that it doesn't have side sensors so when you enable that bypass mode you do have the option to disable side ways flight. Now I thought that when it was in the A pass mode it might not fly off to the left or the right. It did try to keep the path as straight as possible because I think obviously they've programmed it in a way so that when it's using A pass it doesn't fly too much to the left or the right. I did find though that it would swing around trees still and swing around branches so it did still fly left or right. It looks like that sideways flight is basically only for you as the user so you can't actually put any control inputs into the control stick whether that's left or right you can control in other ways so up down forward and back but left and right if you have that disabled sideways flight enabled you can't actually fly left or right so after playing with it a little bit I would actually probably recommend disabling that because it actually gives you more control so as long as you're focusing on the drone and kind of seeing what's going on and having that control over the left or right stick definitely does give you a little bit more control in situations where you might want to take control of the drone so like I said that disable sideways flight doesn't actually seem to disable the drone from flying left or right when you're in a pass mode and when you're trying to use the active track just keep that in mind because obviously there's no side sensors here I did have two close calls that were quite terrifying you know there were actually points when I was facing the opposite way from the drone and I just kind of heard the impact of the drone hitting some little like shrubbery it's kind of like little tiny branches almost that were hanging up from this little shrubbery I guess you would call it but they were so thin that I don't think the obstacle avoidance or the the sensors could actually pick up on them so outside of that like relatively large branches it seemed to pick up on big shrubbery like lots of uh, like volume to something like some sort of object that had a bit of volume to it a bit of shape to it it seemed to be fine with but it's when I had those really thin kind of branches or sticks that the drone seemed to struggle with it. There were only two occasions where it made contact. Uh, both times the drone was fine. It never actually crashed to the ground. It never had any issues like that, but it definitely did make contact on two occasions here. So again, this was quite a thorough test in a dense little bush area in my local area in Brisbane. Yeah, it did great. Considering like I was pretty nervous to fly in such a densely populated spot, but I really wanted to test how well that A-Pass 4.0 worked. And I can say that it worked really well. Like as you can see in all of this footage here, it did a fantastic job regardless of what was going on. There was only maybe, I think there was one occasion, yeah, where it didn't continue. It just stopped because it couldn't figure out what to do. It looked like the gap was too tight for it. So all I had to do was go into the menu, click on the safety settings, and then just turn off the um, obstacle avoidance action. That allowed me to then fly through that gap, and then I could continue with the active track. Another handy little tip that I would highly recommend for people out there is going into the menu and then going across to the control menu and then just enabling that subject scanning option. Now, for whatever reason, it seems to disable it after every flight. So you have to manually go back in and enable subject scanning, which is a little bit annoying. That's not the case with every DJI drone, but regardless, go in there, enable that, and then I'll actually bring up little pluses of what can be tracked. And those pluses can then definitely go into that active track mode. So I find that to be a little easier and more consistent 
system. Once the drones recognize me as a person, it then allows me to enable that active track. In some situations, which actually happened in my previous tests, when I drew a box around myself, it didn't always recognize me as a person. So then it didn't allow me to go into that active track mode. So if you wanna save some time and you don't wanna to have to deal with that screw around process, enable the subject scanning and then it makes it a lot easier. Just quickly before I continue with this video, I do have an amazing special offer for my audience. So if you go to the link below, over to the D1 stores website. I have a bunch of exclusive dance tube bundles over there. So these are exclusive, like I said, to the dance tube audience. That means that no one else can get these, just you guys. Check them out. There's some really cool options in there. And also if you do want to see what else the D1 store can do for you, just send them an email, sales at d1store.com.au. Mention dance tube and they will be able to help you out with some special pricing options. So like I said, I put the Mini 3 Pro through its paces here. This was a pretty full on test and there was a lot going on here. I was honestly very, very impressed, even though it made contact with two objects in the environment. Outside of that, I tested it for a solid 22 minutes. I pretty much used the entire battery here and yeah, really it did an amazing job. There were spots where I did not think it was going to continue and it did continue. You know, the one time it didn't continue was the only time it struggled. Outside of that, it did an amazing job of like maneuvering around everything you can see on the screen recording those little like sensors basically it pops up with like an orange and a red to let you know that it's sensing things in the environment and you can see how the drone's actually working so when it's red it's saying it's really really close when it's orange it's saying it's sensing something and you can see it's going between red and orange just to let the drone know hey there's something there you need to move off to the right slightly or move to the left so that was interesting to see I did find that it didn't swing out to the left or to the right as much as let's say like the Mavic 3 or even the Air 2S. Obviously they have more sensors on them. So I think it allows them to kind of swing around to the left and the right because they can still sense what's off to the right or the left. But in this example here with the Mini 3 Pro, if the drone was to fly too far off to the left or to the right, it wouldn't be able to pick up on what was there and then it could potentially crash. So I think they've kind of changed the programming or changed the way that the drone actually operates here. And it does try to keep a straight path. Even if I'm going forward or back, it will try to keep me right in the center and keep a straight path. I did find occasionally it would increase the altitude, but then it was able to pick up things that were like above it, if there were like branches above it, and it would actually decrease its altitude. So it would come down, descend slightly to avoid what was there. So again, really impressed with how it performed here. It was very interesting to see how the drone performed. Obviously I've tested a lot of drones now. If you're relatively new to the channel, you might not know, but I've been testing DJI drones now for years. So I've tested pretty much all of the most recent drones in the last couple of years. Um, so I have a really good understanding of, I guess, how it performs and what to expect out of that active track mode, basically in that A-pass mode. I will say that if I compare it to like the Air 2S, for example, or the Mavic 3, it definitely isn't as good as those drones, which is, I guess, expected at the price point and at the technology level and the amount of sensors on it, it definitely doesn't do the best job if you compare it to those. You will find that its movement is a little bit odd at times and you'll see it in this video. It kind of has jumpy movement almost where it's kind of questioning, oh, do I move? Do I come here? What do I do? Which again is understandable considering how small this drone is, the amount of like processing that's going into every single maneuver that's happening. Like it's thinking about so much, it's trying to film me at the same time as well as tracking me as well as using those obstacle avoidance sensors. So there is clearly a lot going on here and the drone has got a lot to think about. So you will find that when there's a lot going on, it does, I almost say it's thinking. It looks like it's thinking, it kind of looks at you for a bit and then it moves and it kind of jumps a little bit. So it's not the smoothest at times. Again, this was a very thorough test here. But outside of that, when there was a nice smooth spot where there wasn't too much going on, uh, like I tested it on the road, for example, where there's like a few things around me, but nothing major. And I found that that did a really good job because it's obviously not focusing on everything because there's not too much going on. It can just focus on tracking me. So that was really cool and that worked really smooth. But again, just to reiterate the point, the amount of drones I've tested, I was not expecting the drone to do this well. I had my finger pretty much at all times over that stop button because I was really nervous about something happening. Like I said, quite a full on environment. Any drone would struggle in this environment, but the Mini 3 Pro definitely 
definitely did impress me here considering it only had those two impacts one of them you couldn't even notice it it just kind of hits these tiny little i guess twigs almost and then just keeps going the other one it definitely struggled a little bit and then lost the tracking point and just wouldn't continue because it had noticed it obviously hit something but again didn't crash didn't land or anything like that it just wanted to continue going near the end of my test here i really wanted to see how well the drone would go when it lost the visual line of sight of me like what it would do in that situation if it would just stop or whether it would somehow be able to figure it out or continue moving this is something that i find relatively limiting about the active track mode because it's obviously focusing on that visual cue it needs to see the person if it loses your visual line of sight it's not like it's picking up on the signal from the controller or your phone so it will actually just stop tracking you i've done some recent tests on the channel with different third-party apps and they use that follow mode which basically uses the signal from your phone so that does, in my opinion, give you a more consistent tracking or following experience. So in this test here, you can see there were points where I kind of disappear and the drone just places a point to say, oh, that's where I saw that person last. And then when I poke my body back out again, the drone actually recognizes, oh, that was Dan. Let's track him again. So it did pretty well when I just popped away for a little bit and then came back out. So I was pretty impressed with that. So in most scenarios, like if it's going to lose you for a few seconds, it will keep an eye out and I guess try to figure out, oh, well, he's probably going to come out of this spot and then it just picks up on you again. I did test one where I like completely went behind cover and then walked around the other side and then walked in front of the drone and it had lost me by that point so it didn't bother picking up on me again. But I thought that was pretty interesting. It did a relatively good job. It just shows you that it can lose you for a few seconds and still figure out that it's tracking you. But outside of that, it is a little bit limited if it loses that visual line of sight. So overall, as I'm sure you can probably tell from my thoughts so far, I'm very, very impressed with APAS 4.0 on the the Mini 3 Pro. I find the obstacle sensing and the obstacle avoidance pretty much as I would expect is a high quality obstacle avoidance and high quality A pass feature on the Mini 3 Pro. It does an amazing job of tracking you and avoiding obstacles and objects in the environment. Overall, really, really impressed. Just those few things that I mentioned that maybe are some limitations that might help you consider another drone if this isn't perfect for you. It also really does highlight how amazing those follow modes are on the third party apps and it really makes me want to see that happen like hopefully DJI can bring out a follow mode in the future that's just a little bit more reliable and consistent as just using the signal from the controller or from the phone you know depending on how they go about doing it regardless still very impressed and I think the mini 3 pro is an extremely impressive sub 250 gram drone for a micro drone that's under 250 grams it's got so much going on yeah really really excited so I will have some more content on the channel very soon showcasing the mini 3 pro I would love your thoughts though were you impressed with how well it did here? Do you think it could do better maybe? Do you think it maybe some software updates will improve its performance even more? How does it compare to maybe other drones that you've tested in the past? I would love your thoughts in the comments below and I'll chat to you in the next episode. Thank you for watching. Peace. Let me in, I'll help you out I won't